Greetings everyone, we will continue our discussion on programming for problem solving using C. In the previous session, we have started about arrays and we have learned about what are two dimensional arrays and what are the applications of arrays and bounds checking. In this session, we will be going for the next topic regarding strings. So, we will be first looking at what is strings and uh, the basic concepts of strings. Later, we will be looking at uh, what are the string IO functions and at last, we will be looking at what are arrays of strings. So first what is a string? So string is a sequence of characters terminated by a null character. So a string is actually a one dimensional array of characters in C language. You, are, you have already seen one dimensional array of uh, integers. Okay, where well, this is a one dimensional array of integers and uh, if you are having a one dimensional array like this 10, 20, 30. This is a one dimensional array with uh, integers 10, 20, 30. Okay, so as long as you are dealing with your uh, integers, this will be an integer array. If you are dealing with the floating point values, float c of 5, so that will be a floating point array. So the character arrays are nothing but strings okay so your character arrays if you are writing char so this is a character array so a string is actually one dimensional array of characters in c language so a one dimensional array since you are having only one script one subscript so this is a one dimensional array a one dimensional array of characters is nothing but a string Okay, so next, a string is a sequence of characters, so it will be a sequence of characters that is, since you have specified it as a 10, the size as 10, we will be having 10 characters and it is terminated by one special character called as null. Okay, each and every string will be terminated by the special character null, that is slash 0 and uh, so since you have written 10, we will be having 9 characters followed by one special character like this, that is slash 0, that is null character. So whenever I have a string, string is nothing but a one dimensional character array and it is terminated by a null character. For example, the string hello world, okay, so I am not considering these quotes, quotes is also a string here. So, quotes is also one character here, we are not considering those quotes. So, if this is a word, that is hello word, then each and every character, H, E, L, L, O, and space is also one character, W, O, R, L, D. So, each and every character will be counted here. This counts 12 characters, that is including the space, we will be having 12 characters, including slash 0, that is null character which is automatically added by the compiler at the end of the string. Okay, each and every string will contain that null character. So this is about your string, so you will be having how many? These are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 characters followed by null, so completely will be having 12 characters in that string. So the strings will be represented by double quotes like this. Okay, so the strings will be represented by double quotes and the characters will be represented by single quotes. Okay, the individual characters will be represented by single quotes and the complete string will be represented by double quotes. So the C language doesn't have a string data type. Okay, it doesn't have a string data type that is why we are implementing the string by using one dimensional character arrays. So you are having other data types like int, float, but you are not having a separate data type for your strings. That is why you are implementing strings by using one dimensional character arrays. So your character arrays or strings are nothing but a sequence of characters followed by a null symbol. So we will be having sequence of characters followed by a null character. So that is a string, for example, this is your string, I am declaring a one dimensional array char c 
and I am spacing it as an array and I am not specifying the size why because you are directly initializing if you have the initializing you need not specify the size so now you have initialized your character array into this particular string as C string so when the compiler encounters a sequence of characters enclosed in the double quotation if it is encountering a sequence of characters enclosed in the double quotation it appears it appends a null character slash zero at the end of by default okay so this is how your particular uh, c string will be present that is it will be creating a sequence of characters the first character will be c okay the next character will be space the next character will be s t r i n k so due to space i will take here g after that you will be having the null sign null character this is how your complete string will be present in the memory so since the it is a character will be having one byte memory space each and everything will be one byte and they will be present in consecutive memory locations just like your one dimensional arrays your character is nothing but a one dimensional arrays your string is nothing but a one dimensional array of a sequence of character terminated by a null character so this is a representation of your complete string so how to how to declare it by using char since it is a character array and you have to specify the name of the array and since this is a initialization you need not specify the size if it is a declaration how to specify the size okay always make sure while uh, declaring this thing you have to take into count this null symbol as if your string contains 100 characters make sure the size of your uh, string is 101 that is you have to take the particular null character also into count while declaring itself okay so this particular thing has a uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 characters so at least the size of this particular string should be 9 so while declaring you make sure your size is clear here okay so this is how you declare your strings declaring and the initialization of your strings so the first part is your initialization so you can initialize by while declaring itself that is you can specify char name and i have specified the size here and inside that i have written the string in the double quotes i have written the string in double quotes okay you can uh, just uh, declare like this char name of 30 this is a simple declaration without any initialization initialization means while declaring itself you give the value declaration means you just declare it and later you use that particular variable okay so this is the initialization where you are initializing your name array to study tonight okay and this is another way to initialize the same thing that is char name and 10 characters and you specify the characters one by one by using commas okay you specify the characters one by one using the commas the same thing can be written like this this above thing also can be written char name of 13 okay using the one dimensional array format you can uh, specify the s comma t comma u like this you can specify all last t after that you have to specify the null character and quotation semicolon so this is what you have done in a one dimensional array initialization the same thing can be done like this or you can do the initialization directly by specifying the string in this manner both are valid initializations okay if you see this one char ch of 3 equals to hell since hell is a four character string but you have specified the size as 3 so it is not a valid initialization and declaration so make sure the size of this particular uh, a string is 
well above your string. So you are having four characters here. Apart from that, you will be having a null character. So it should be minimum five. Char str of four. Okay, this is the declaration part, and you cannot directly initialize separately like this. Like your uh, integers, like this integer you have written a, a is equals to ten. So this is a valid thing. But in strings, you have to uh, you have to use other things so in, in order to initialize the values. You can initialize directly like this, but you, after declaration, you cannot give the value in this man. That is, you have declared char str of four. Next, you cannot give the values initialize the values like this. Okay. So this is not a valid thing. In order to give value into this str, either you have to use your scanf or other input output functions. So this is how you have to declare. So in order to declare, I have to specify the char. That is, since it is a character array. After that, I have to specify the array name. Okay. Next, I have to specify the size. Okay, size means the number of characters you are going to have in the particular string. That will be the declaration. And if I want to initialize, so this is a valid thing. Okay, you can declare and initialize in the same statement, but you cannot declare in one statement and initialize in another statement like this. This is not a valid. This is a valid. So this is about declaration and initialization of your strings. Next part is your string input and output. So as I told you, you can declare a string like this str of five. So this is a declaration. Once after declaration, you cannot give value like this. This is not a value statement. Okay. In order to input. Into your string, you have to use input-output functions. In order to output your string, you have to use your input-output functions. Your uh, string input and output functions will be present in your stdio.h. Okay, your string input-output functions will be present in your stdio.h. You can use your scanf along with percentages format specifier to read a string from your terminal. Okay. You can use your scanf along with your percentages format specifier to read a string from your terminal. For example, if you are having a program in this manner, main. Next, I have to declare a string char str of ten. Okay, so if I write something like this, printf, enter a string. Okay, so I have to use scanf percentages yes. percentages. Yes. After that, address of str. So I want to read the data into the string str. Okay, this is how you use the input function scanf to read value into str. Okay, now. In your uh, programming, while performing the input, if I give something called as hello, okay. If I give something called as hello, so if I print printf, in order to give the output percentage is str. Okay. If I give the input as hello, it will print the output as hello. If I give the print input as hello, it will output as hello. Okay. That is how you can write a simple program by using printf and scanf for string input and output. But there is one problem with your scanf. Okay, it terminates its input on the first white space it encounters. Okay, what is the meaning of this? Is for example, if I give the input as hello world, if I give the input as hello world. According to the definition, if I uh, am entering a string, if I give the input as "Hello world," okay, means this is the complete string. "Hello world" is the complete string. So, but when I use scanf, what it will happen is it will take all the characters starting from the starting point until it encounters a 
void space until it encounters a void space. The input will be terminated here and your str will take only hello. It will not take the remaining word space and void. Okay, it will not take this remaining word, whatever may be the remaining part of the sentence which is present. So if I want to take only one word as string into your program, then I can use your scan. Okay, if I want to take only one word into the program, then I can use scan. But if I want to take a line of text or more words into the program at the end, okay, if I want to take a line of text into a string, then your scanf is not feasible to take direct. Okay, why? Because your scanf function it terminates its input on the first white space it encounters. On the first white space it encounters. So it will terminate the input here and hello will go into str, only hello will be printed and your uh, space and world will not be printed. In order to overcome this, okay, therefore if you try to read an input string hello world using scanf, it will only read hello and terminate after encountering the white spaces. Okay, it will only read hello and it will terminate after encountering the white spaces. In order to though, know that, in order to overcome that by using scanf, our C, C supports a format specification known as the edit set conversion code. Okay, known as the edit set conversion code that can be used to read a line containing variety of characters including white spaces. So if I want to read a line of text by using scanf, then I have to use this edit code conversion space. Okay, edit code conversion method. Okay, this I have to use in order to read a line of text. If I want to read only one word, I can use scanf. If I want to use a line of text in scanf, then I have to use this method. So this method I will be showing you in the example. So you are having hash include stdao.h So string.h will run later Next main Next char str of 20 I have declared str with 20 elements That is the size of your string is going to be 20 Next I have printed enter string If you see the scanf here I have written something like this scanf Okay in the previous, you have written as percentages directly instead of that. I am writing this statement, it is not visible there. I will check it here. Okay. Cap symbol slash n. So, place it in your complete uh, box. So what this specifies that it will take all the input until it encounters a new line character. It will take a line of input until it encounters a new line character. So if I want to read a complete line of text into a string, I have to use this particular code. Okay, how to use this kind of statement where it tells that I have to read all the code until it encounters a new line character. So, this statement if I specify the input as hello world space world, okay, then it, this will print hello world. Okay, this will print hello world. So, if I don't use this thing, what will happen? It will print only hello. Now, it will print both hello world. So this is how you have to overcome that particular uh, spacing problem in scanf by using this conversion code. Apart from this one, so your standard in your string input can be done by using your scanf. Your string can be uh, output can be done by using your printf. Apart from this basic input output function that is printf and scanf, you are having other functions. Another method to read your strings or character strings with white spaces from the terminal is by using get s function. We are having this function called as get s. So your get s function can be used to read data into your string 
and it can contain spaces. Okay, this will be much easier compared to uh, uh, using scanf for reading strings. So while reading strings, it is better to use your get as statements than your scan. So your get as can be used in this manner. So you declare a string that is char text of twenty. So you specify get as of your uh, array name that is your text. In you can read your input here that is you can specify hello world here and print as percentage as text. You can uh, print. It will print hello world. It will print hello world. So there is a get as function to read strings. Okay, a read a line of text will be using get as. Okay, a similar. This will be the input function. We are having a similar output function. Put as of. So we'll be having put as function instead of printf. I can use put as of text to print my string. So get as and put as. So these two statements can be used. Our two functions can be used. To read and write strings in your C program, get as and put as. So you can uh, another function you can use is you can use something called as if get as function to read a line of string and you can use put as to display the string. As I told you, you can use put as to display the string. Another thing is you can use if get as. If get as function to read a line of text, just like your get as, you can use if get as. So if get as can be used in this manner. So we are having car name, next uh, print, enter name. If you use if get as function, if you see here, in a get as function, you just write get as of uh, your name. That is the array name. It will be taking you input of your particular string. Another method is you can use if get as. Inside the if get as, you have to specify three parameters. Inside the if get as function, I have to specify the three parameters. The first parameter is the string name, that is the name. The second parameter is the size of, that is the number of bytes the string is going to take, the size of name. Okay. The third one is where, from where you are entering this particular input. I am using the standard input that is keyboard, so it will take the keyboard input. If there are other input devices, you can specify this particular thing here. Okay, if get as is more, uh, will be used in, in files to get the data from other uh, files. But here you can use the same thing to get the data from your input. So the string if get as can be used to read a line of text, but you have to specify three. Uh, parameters for that particular function. That is, one is the name, name of your string. The second is the size of the string. Third is from where you are getting the input. That is standard in. And you can use printf to print uh, any string. That is print. Then put as to print the particular string. So completely in order to perform string input and output. So in order to input, you can use your scanf. Okay, without any conversion, you can use scanf for one word. Uh, we can use the scan scanf for other complete line of text, and you can use get as function to read the particular string. And for output, you can use printf with percentage s, and you can use put s. Can use if get as to read a line of text. So these are the five different string input and output functions. So to read the input, I can use scanf get as and if get as. To print the output of your strings, I can use printf and put as. So these are your string input output functions. And the last one for this session is your array of strings. So a string is one dimensional array of characters as you have already seen if you are having one dimensional array of characters we will be calling it as a string an array of strings is a two dimensional array of characters so if you remember your two dimensional array is a set of rows and columns 
okay this will be the rows and this will be the columns okay a one dimensional array is uh, one string okay a one dimensional array is one string okay a one dimensional array is one string if i am having more than one dimensional array this is this is a one dimensional array with four hell this is a two dimensional array with four hell words okay so this two dimensional array of characters we will be calling it as array of strings okay this is one string this will be calling it as array of strings so an array of strings is nothing but a two dimensional array of characters whenever i want to implement more than one words in my program if i want only one word in my program or one string in my program i can use my one dimensional array of strings if i want to implement more than one words or more than one line of strings okay not one string if i want to implement more than one string in my program i will be going for array of strings so just like we can create a two dimensional array of int float we can also create a two dimensional array of character of strings okay we can create two dimensional character arrays those will be calling it as array of strings so this is how you can create a two dimensional array of characters or two dimensional or array of strings so we are specifying char so this will be a string and then the array name then if you see three will be the rows and 10 will be the columns what is the meaning here is we are going to have three strings of 10 characters each okay the first specifies the number of strings and the second specify the number of characters in each string okay so this row specifies number of strings and column specifies number of characters in string so here what i have initialized is i have i initialized the first row to spike s p i k e okay the second row to tom the third row to jerry okay these are the three strings and the first string represents the first row that will be the spike so we'll be having three rows first row second row third row and each row will contain 10 characters that is from 0 to 9 okay we'll be having rows 1 2 3 so the first row is a spike the second row is tom the third row is jerry we can be having until 10 characters we'll be having this particular implementation so this two dimensional array we'll be calling it as an array of strings where we will be having one dimensional array separate okay so we have three strings of 10 characters each that is why how we implemented this is one type of initialization where you are specifying the individual characters just what you have specified in your uh, one dimensional strings in the same thing you can specify the strings in this manner three uh, strings like this that is you have to specify the initialization by using this particular format so this is how you can uh, initialize or create your array of strings so whenever i want more than one string into my program i can use this array of strings so before for going further regarding this particular uh, array of strings and pointers okay before going further into our array of strings and how to use those array of strings how to implement those array of strings i think you can understand what is an array of strings by this time a two dimensional character array will be calling it as an array of strings but before going to know the implementation and writing the program regarding that one you have to understand the small relation between pointers and arrays okay you will be learning about pointers in the further sessions but for the time being you know how to know that what is a pointer and a, what is the relationship between a pointer and an array so a pointer is nothing but okay so if you see if i declare a variable this will be a fast uh, implementation 
fast uh, understanding of your uh, uh, point is so if you see a declaration in a is equals to 20 so then what you have to understand is a is a variable okay variable will contain the value 20 since a is a variable each and every variable will be having one memory location 1 2 3 4 5 like this it will be having one memory location okay so when I have a declaration of a variable, a variable will contain a memory location. In the uh, a pointer is nothing but a pointer will contain this particular memory location as value. Okay. So a pointer is nothing but a variable which will point or contain the memory location of other variables. So I will be giving a brief introduction. So in order to declare a pointer, I will be using something like this. Okay. So this is a normal variable and this is a pointer variable. In order to differentiate between a normal, normal variable and a pointer variable, I have to use the star. Since I have to, since I have specified the star, star means I am telling that this is a pointer variable. Pointer variable doesn't contain normal values, it will contain address values. Okay, it will not contain normal values, it will contain address values. So it is also a variable, so PTR, okay, but it will not contain normal values like your integers, it will contain address values. So what I am doing is, I am uh, assigning PTR is equal to address A. So A will be having one memory address, that memory address is assigned to PTR. So is A is having one memory address, that memory address is assigned to PTR. So now what will happen? This will contain this particular value. So the memory address will be present in your PTR. So a pointer is nothing but it is a variable which will hold the address of other variables. Okay, which will hold the address of other variables. PTR. Now PTR is pointing to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that is PTR will contain the address 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So pointers are nothing but variables which will hold the address of other variables. So it is having some applications regarding how to use these pointers and how to implement these pointers. We will be learning them about in the further sessions. For the time being, know that. So if I have the PTR, I will contain the address of another variable. Your array, so now coming to array. Your array name, array name is also, so if you see the line, the name of the array is a pointer to the 0th element of the array. The name of the array is a pointer to the 0th element of the array. So what is the meaning here is, if I have an array in a of 3, is equals to 10, 20, 30. Okay, so this is an array. So if you see here, this is 0, 1, 2, this will be 10, 20, 30. So this is a representation of your array. So what is the meaning or the differentiation between or the relation between pointer and array is the name of the array that is A is a pointer to the 0th memory location present in your array, the same array. So A will be pointer to the 0th memory location. That is, if the first memory location is 1000, since these are integers, the second memory location will be 1004, the third memory location will be 1008. So now A will contain 1000 value, that is, will be acting as a pointer to the first element in your array. Okay. It will be acting as a pointer to the first element in your array. So don't get confused, don't think too much about these pointers. For the time being, know that your array name will act as pointer to the first element in your array. Okay. So when I am acting as a pointer, what I can do is, so the pointer can point to this element and print this element. Okay. So, just remember that the name of your array will act as a pointer to the first element in your array. So with that, you can understand how you are going to implement your character arrays. 
So in general, CH AR, this will be the name of array. We are using name of array plus i points to the ith string in the one dimensional array or the ith one dimensional array. As I told you, you are having three one dimensional arrays. This complete thing we are calling it as an array of strings. Okay, where this is the first array, uh, first string, this is the second string, this is the st uh, third string. So, when I use the name plus zero, it will point to the first array. When I use name plus one, it will be pointing to the second string. It will, if I use name plus two, I will be pointing to the third string. In a similar manner, if I use uh, array name plus i, that is the position, I can go to that particular position element. So this is how you can use pointer and addition to get to any element in your array. So if I want to go to the seventh element or seventh string in this character array, even though you are having only three characters, if I want to go to the seventh uh, seventh string in your array, what I have to do? I have to use C H A R plus six. I will go to the seventh string in that particular array. So this is how you can use this statement to implement where your C H R A R name name of the array, which is the pointer pointer plus six means it will go to the sixth or seventh element or seventh uh, string in your complete two dimensional array. So this will be somewhat a complex thing to you, but for the time being know that you can use this statement that is name of your array plus a value to go to any string in your two dimensional array. So if you combine this thing into a program, so what we have done is you have declared you have written your usual header file main next i have declared i value then i have declared an array of string with the three value three strings spike tom and jerry okay so first way that is if i want to print all these strings means i have to print spike tom jerry if i want to print the strings what i have to use percentages C H A R R plus I. C H A R R plus I. C H A R plus I means so when I value is zero, it will print zero. That is spike. It will print. When I value is one, it will print Tom. When I value is two, it will print Cherry. The second thing what you are seeing is a percentage U. Okay, this thing is it will print the address of this particular string. Okay, it will print the address of this particular string. So the first percentages will print a spike. Spike is present in so and so, -so address. Tom is present in so and so address. Jerry is present in so and so address. So if you see, spike is present in thousand address. Tom is present in thousand tenth address. Jerry is present in thousand twentieth address. Okay, it will print these three values when I try to uh, print this particular string. Okay. So just remember that your name of the array will act as a pointer to your uh, elements that is the first position element. From there if I keep adding I can go to any position element in your arrays. Okay, so that is how you are using the same terminology to print uh, each and every string in your array. Okay, so this is about uh, your array of strings where you will be having more than one string in your particular program and I can access them by using array name plus the position to go to any particular array. So this is how the implementation of array of strings can be done. So far you have seen how to declare a string that is you can declare a string and how to give input and output for the strings that is you can use printf, scanf, getf, putf, fgetf in order to perform your uh, string input and output and you can use this array of strings to implement more than one string in your complete program. So in the next session we will be looking at how to manipulate these strings that is how to change these strings and how to perform operations on those strings and other topics. Thank you.